Hello, YouTube. Long time no see. I know it's been a really long time since I've made a video, but I so appreciate all of you who have watched my current, my previous videos and who have subscribed. So it's been fun to see that number climbing. I'm so glad that y'all are getting good use and tips out of these videos. So today, um, I'm very excited to get back to this and I can't, I have lots of ideas, but if you have any ideas for future videos you'd like to see me make, please leave them for me down in the comments because I will listen. I do all kinds of sewing and I would love to help you with whatever you're struggling with. So uh, before we get started, make sure you click the subscribe button so you don't miss future videos. And also you can visit my blog at www.pincutsewstudio.com for lots more tutorials that I haven't made videos on and other sewing information. But today we're gonna learn to make a Bible cover. Um, this can actually work for any kind of book. It's fun to make composition book covers or to cover your math book because why shouldn't it be cute, right? But um, Natalie got a new Bible and she likes the size of it and she likes the size of the print, but she's not thrilled with the brown color on the outside. If it was up to her, her Bible would be pink. So <laughs> we're gonna make it kind of pink. Um, this Bible cover is the one I made. Her Bible's the same size as mine. And I have made a, a magnetic snap closure. But you, another option I will show you is to use a ribbon with a button or have no closure at all. Natalie wants handles on hers, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. This is a pretty basic Bible cover. I don't know if you grew up in church, but when I was growing up, Bible covers were um, very floral and very lacy and very quilted and poofy. <laughs> So this is not that kind of Bible cover. I've sort of modernized this just to protect the cover because mine was getting kind of messed up. So um, the first thing, of course, you're gonna need is your fabric. So you're gonna want something kind of thick for the outside. This is duck cloth from Hobby Lobby. And then a cotton lining for the inside of it. Um, you don't need a lot. It'll just kind of depend on the size of your Bible. But if you're using something thinner than this for your outside, you're gonna also wanna get some cotton quilt batting. Um, another thing you're going to need is these magnetic snaps, unless of course you're doing a button or no closure at all. These are pretty handy. I don't buy the sew-in kind. I buy the kind that you can insert and use pliers to bend the prongs. So I got these at Hobby Lobby too. I think that's all. Let's get started. Alrighty, the first thing we have to do is cut our pieces. So we're going to need to measure our Bible. Hers is all new and stuff, so I'm going to use mine. <laughs> My Bible measures... 12 by almost 9, so 8 and 3 quarters. Mm -hmm. I have some little notes here. I'm going to add a half an, an inch and a half to the width and an inch and a half to the height in order to cut my pieces. So I'm going to cut my piece 13 and a half by 10 and a quarter. All right, so I did wash and dry my fabric. I recommend you do that also if you ever intend to wash this Bible cover. Okay, so let's see. I'm using a rotary cutter and a mat, but if you do not have these tools, you can just make patterns out of printer paper for yourself. Then you can reuse them. I do that a lot. But this is a handy tool too. So I made it, I created a straight edge here. I'm gonna put that on the zero and I'm gonna cut my height first. So 10 and a quarter. And then I'm going to open this up. I'm going to cut off this selvage edge. So I created a straight edge there now. I'm going to put that straight edge over here. It's kind of wrinkled. I need to iron it some more with steam. Okay. Let's see. That's nice and straight. So now I'm going to cut the, the width to be 13 and a half. You can see I'm putting my line here on the 13 and a half inch line. Okay, so this is the outside of my Bible cover. Now I'm gonna use this to cut my lining. So she chose this really cute pink arrows that matches the color perfectly. I'm just gonna quickly cut this out. Obviously scissors are safer if you're a young person, but for me this is faster. Oops. Okay, so I have my exterior and my lining ready. Next thing I need to do is cut my flaps for the inside. So for the flaps, I have my notes here. I'm gonna cut them the same as my height, so 10 and a quarter, and then I'm gonna cut them by seven inches. 
you want them to come in maybe like halfway into your Bible cover and it's gonna be folded in half. So I chose seven inches. If you have a large Bible, you may wanna do eight or eight and a half. But that part's not really as particular as some of the other elements. Oops, I'll just drop my pieces. Let's see if I can get out of this scrap. This is already cut to height, so I just have to cut my seven inch pieces here. It's already 10 and a quarter high. So I'm gonna cut two pieces that are seven inches wide. There's one. And here's two. All right, so these pieces are gonna get folded this way. Those will be my inside flaps. Okay, so I'm gonna set those over here. Okay, next I'm gonna cut out my handles. I'm gonna cut my handles four inches by 11 inches. So those are pretty, they're short handles. You could do a longer strap, that might be fun too. Let's see yours in the cutter. All right, I'm gonna cut my four inch width and then I'm gonna divide, cut that up into two 11 inch pieces. So I'm gonna cut off this end. And cut them at 11. Let's see if that's gonna be big enough. They're gonna go like this. To make them substantial, they're gonna be layered that way. And then they'll be this size of a handle. That's pretty small, what do you guys think? Oh, I like it, I think it's good. Okay, so now I have cut all my pieces. Time to start sewing. This is really a pretty simple project. It will not take very long at all. Oh wait, I forgot the little, I forgot my, this piece. I guess I forgot to make notes for this part. It looks like I cut this, it's folded at the top. So I cut this six and a half by, let's see, three and a quarter. So I'm gonna use one of my scraps. Let's see, is this a scrap? Oh, I can't remember which piece is which. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this, what did I say, three and a half? And then by six and a quarter. Okay, so that's gonna be that little flap that comes, let's make sure I cut that the right size. Yep, it's gonna look like that, okay. Let's get started sewing. So let's actually make this um, this closure piece first. I'm gonna fold it in half right sides together. Um, I can press this closed if you want to, but um, you're gonna flip it, so it might be better not to do that. You're gonna just sew a quarter inch seam on both of these raw edges, but not this one. Okay, I'm gonna snip these corners, not through my stitches. Then I'm gonna turn it. Use my handy chopstick. With this duck cloth, it's kind of a loose weave, so you don't wanna to poke too hard or it'll go right through. Okay, I'm gonna go press this flat. I just noticed I got an accidental flower center right on the flap, so that's cute. Okay, for handles, I'm going to press this in half. Let me just do it with my finger so I can show you. I don't wanna drag you over to the ironing board. And then you're gonna open that up. You're gonna press each end into the center like this, with your iron, of course, like this. And then you're gonna turn it again so your edges meet. So now I have this pressed handle and it's four layers thick. This will make it so it's not super flimsy to hold onto without having to use interfacing. So now you're just gonna edge stitch close to the edge on both sides. And you're gonna do that with both handles. Okay, here are my finished handles. Let me trim my threads, whoops. And now it's time to start putting our pieces onto our outsides. You wanna separate your lining out. 
And your handles, well, let's do our strap first. I think I want this side to be the front. I want this side to show. So I'm gonna put that side down, right in the center. Maybe I should mark the center. Mark the center of that, and I'll mark the center of this. Okay, so that's gonna go there. And then your handles are gonna go like this. One here. Let me get some pins or clips. So I'm gonna clip, clip, and then clip that right in the center. And on the other end, let's see, I wanna make sure I get them in the same place on both sides. So I have this two inches from the edge on either side. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Two inches. These mats are really handy too. I'll link to these in the notes. So now you're gonna go ahead and baste your pieces on. That means just use a long stitch, like four, four and a half, just to hold them there. Okay, so now it looks like this. So when you when it's finished, it should turn and be like this. If that makes sense, this will flap over here. All right, it's turning out right. This is kind of a puzzle of a project. So now we need to get our lining piece. Let's put that aside. We're gonna get our lining piece. Get all the extra threads off the back, goodness. And we're going to go ahead and press these flaps in half. I'll go do that real quick. Like this. Okay, so you're gonna have the right side of your lining up, pretty side up, and you're gonna put each flap Folded side is right here. If they don't fit, you probably just folded them half the wrong way. So try that out and see if it works the other way. And then all of our raw edges are together. So I'm gonna go baste these on also. This just holds, basting holds everything in place. And the reason you do it long stitches is so you can take them out real easily later if they happen to show an accident. Okay, so I'm gonna go baste these on. Okay, I'm done with that. You can see I'm sewing pretty close to the edge because I'd like it if I didn't have to remove my basting later because, um, you know, it's a pain. So <laughs> if you sew just inside your quarter inch seam allowance, then you shouldn't have to remove anything later. Okay, so now I'm gonna lay this right side up and I'm gonna put this pretty side down. Whoops, my chopstick fell. Pretty side down, line up my edges, and I'm gonna clip my edges together. This is the last step before the button. Oh, I should, I should tell you. If you wanted to do a different kind of closure, let me get an example. You can always, oh, there's strings, do something like this. So instead of doing this, you'll just put a length of ribbon or rickrack here. And then your last step will be to sew a button on the outside. So you can close it like this. That's another option. Okay, so now I'm going to put this right side down and clip my edges. You can grab a seat so my arms aren't like in your face. Okay. And as I'm sure you know, every time we're gonna flip something right side out, we leave a hole. So I'm gonna leave my hole right here. I always put two clips or pins in the spot where I'm gonna stop so that I don't have to unsew the hole that I forgot to leave open. Okay, and then we're gonna go back to a regular stitch length, two, two and a half. Start here, back stitch, go all the way around and back stitch and a quarter inch seam. Okay, as always, I'm going to clip my corners, not too close. Oh shoot, I forgot I dropped my chopstick. Okay, and I'm gonna reach inside my hole that I left. And gently turn it right side out. There we go. Okay, so if you flipped it and your flap is on this side like this, 
Don't worry, you just need to turn it towards your lining. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna go press this really well. Make sure all my edges are crisp. Use your fingers to push them out like that. And use steam. Okay, so you should it should look all beautiful like this. And then your hole that you left, just press it under as if you had sewn it. And we're gonna hand stitch that close pretty invisibly. So I'm gonna put my needle in here. You see I'm not grabbing very much fabric and then I can tuck my tail in. And then I'm just gonna move along right inside that crease and stitch this opening closed. One last stitch. And knot it twice. And I'm gonna tuck this tail in by just sliding it over here. Snipping it short. <clears throat> okay, so well, the cover is done. All that's left is to do the snap. Okay, let's try this on for size really quick before we finish the button part. Look how pretty it fits. And this will go over like this. Okay, so now we're gonna find those buttons. Here they are. Not buttons, snaps. So they come like this. Let's see, there's two that comes in a pack, so this is what you should have. Two of these little rings. One male part. One female part. I'm not making that up, that's what they're called. And then these have prongs on the back. So you do have to actually cut holes in your project. So very carefully, well, this one's obvious. So this one we're going to put, you want this side, goes this way. Goes on the inside of the flap. I'm going to mark here with a pencil. I'm eyeballing it. If you're OCD, you can totally measure. I want it close to the end. I'm gonna have one prong go here one prong go there okay there you go i'm gonna use an awl and some scissors so i'm gonna stab a hole here and i'm gonna take my little snips and make it slightly bigger except my little snips are getting dull hmm let's see let's try to use my big snips you can of course just use a razor blade or whatever you have. But I'm too lazy to go upstairs and get that. Okay. So that's what you'll have. Since my fabric is a looser weave and it will fray maybe more easily than some, before I put my prongs in, I'm going to use my fray check here. Maybe. This is pretty much like clear nail polish, but it's better because it dries totally clear. You know how clear nail polish dries like crusty kinda? This doesn't do that, and you can get this at any craft or sewing store. Dude, come out. There we go, whoops, that was too much. Okay, I'm gonna do both sides. I really don't wanna have holes, especially because it's gonna get handled pretty often. Okay, and then I'm gonna stick my prongs in here. And then on the other end, this bracket needs to go here. Then you can bend your prongs down. Okay, now let's figure out where we want the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my snap on here. This is the easiest way in my opinion. Oops, it has plastic on it. Snap it on. I don't want it to be tight. So I'm just gonna mark where my prongs are hitting my cover. 
Now, this one might be slightly trickier because I don't want it to go through this flap. I just want it to go through the, the front, right? The front and the lining. So I'm just gonna make my holes. I'm keeping my flap out of the way. Small snips. Make sure my snips went through my lining. Not quite on that one. Okay, then I'm going to fray check. Not so much this time. Fray check the back. Okay. Oh, my snap is still stuck over here. This one, all right, this one's going to go through this way. And then you flip it over. Don't forget your bracket. And then you can bend the prongs down. I like to press them down real good. Okay, so that one's hiding. Let's just try it and see. Make sure we're in the right place. I'm not putting the Bible all the way in. Beautiful. So now, this is not pretty, right? So we're going to find a pretty way to cover that. Of course, you could find like a pretty button or something. But I think this turned out to be a cute touch. I just got a piece of wool felt and I stitched it on with embroidery floss here. So it covered it and I just buried the knot here. So I'm gonna do that. If you make this or anything with any of my videos, I would so love to see what you made. So you can tag me on Instagram at Nikki Schreiner. I'll put that in the notes too. Or hashtag pin cut so that'd be fun. It'd be so much fun to see your stuff. There you go. Perfect. Cheers and happy sewing.